West Indies squad for the 2024 ICC Men's T20 World Cup. Captain Robman Powell. Vice Captain Alzari Joseph. Johnson Charles. Given that every Roston Chase. Shimron Hetmeyer. Jason Holder. Shay Hope. Akil Hossein. Shamar Joseph. Brandon King. Budakesh Moti. Nicholas Puran. Andre Russell. Sheriffane Rutherford. Romario Shepard. Clean them up. All right, so we're back on the Sportsmax Zone and we continue our discussion around the West Indies World Cup squad announcement. A lot has been made of Shimron Hetmeyer's inclusion. Also, the uncapped Shamar Joseph, lead selector Desmond Haynes, sought to explain their picks. Very long discussion with the uh, situation of the batting lineup, and as I want to state very clearly that our process has always been rules. Uh, from the time um, Tammy came in, and I also agree with it, we, we look at rules that we want people to play. And um, the situation of someone like uh, Shamar Joseph, you know, with his skills, you can't, you really can't question Shamar Joseph's skills. You saw him in Australia. Um, I think that uh, the role that, you know, we were looking at someone up front uh, bowling the first power play, and I think that uh, and he he ticked the boxes for us. Um, it was a very close decision regarding the selection uh, between uh, Kyle and also uh, Hetty, but uh, we look at it from the point of view of we wanted the, the extra batsman to be the one batting down the order. When we were looking at the team, we were talking about him playing a finishing role down there. That's where we went for the extra batsman down, batting down the order most on at the top. So we were hoping that Hetty would play that role as a finisher for us in the, in the, in the bottom. He also explained the selection of all-rounder, Ross and Chase. At the stacks, you will see that Ross and Chase is probably the most economical bowler we've got in the squad at the moment. But also, you've got to look at Ralston as well as his all round performance. Uh, I think in the last year or so, Ralston's feeling has improved 100%, and I believe that Ralston is still can do a good job for us with the bat and can play a similar role when Darren Sammy and his men, when Marlon Sammy's won the World Cup. Our very esteemed cricket and Analyst Fazir Mohammed joins us further to assess the squad and selectors' justification. Faz, welcome to the show. Good to be on the show once again, Ryan. All right, Faz. So, just your initial thoughts, because we didn't speak about this squad just yet. So, your initial thoughts on the names. Not entirely surprising. I, I think we're just looking at the, the squads that you all would have named yourself, Lance, uh, and of course, Nikhil, uh, ahead of the announcement, it, they're really never is going to be a huge variant. There'll be a couple of players here and there, Kyle Mesh, uh, uh, Shimon Edmire, uh, Shafane Rutherford, sorry, not Shafane Rutherford, Shamar Joseph, uh, as against someone like an Obed McCoy. Uh, and these uh, will be the, the talking points. Uh, and of course, Hetmeyer uh, as well, another talking point because of the issues that he became associated with, fitness, focus, and so many other things, apart from just form going into a World T20 tournament. So uh, just to encapsulate, I probably would have gone for, for Kyle Mayers instead of a good Akish Moti because I've already got a left-arm spinner in Akil Hussein. But again, I see the merits in the uh, arguments that would have been put forward because Moti has been very effective, very successful. The nature of the pitches, where the West Indies are going to be playing, their early matches could favor him as well. So yeah, there, there are a number of options. And the Shamar Joseph one, that would appear to be a calculated gamble, given the fact that, of course, he would not have played a lot of T20 cricket. He's had that toe injury, but it, it almost seems to be wanting to continue with that feel-good factor that he provided so memorably on the final day of that test match in Brisbane almost four months ago now. Yeah, and fans, are you pleased with the selections? Other than what you mentioned, do you think that we have a balanced team that, of course, c can compete at this highest level, which is the World Cup? It looks balanced to me, but at the end of the day, Mariah, it's about performing on the big occasion. You can have the best possible team, and then on the day, you fall apart, or, or key players don't deliver. Remember, the shorter the format, 
the more unpredictable it is. You look at England versus West Indies, Kolkata 2016, 19 runs needed to get in one over. I think the balance there would have been clearly in favor of England. It didn't happen with four consecutive sixes from Carlos Brathwaite. So that, that is the, the, the element of the T20 game that makes it so unpredictable. And therefore, you could have the best balance squad available. You could have players at the top of their form. It could all fall apart in one over, in one over of bad bowling or in one over of brilliant batting. That's the nature of it. So yes, the team looks balanced to me, but that is by no stretch of the imagination any guarantee that the West Indies will win the title or even make the semifinals. Yeah, let me pick up from there, Faz, because you've touched on something uh, regarding mental focus and uh, moving away from the roster, because we, we all know these guys are, are, are top, top cricketers. It's a matter of performing on the day. And I asked Nicol this earlier on about Darren Sammy being their coach and the recency of his um, career as a player himself and a former teammate of some of the players he's, he's now coaching. How much value do you think uh, Darren Sammy adds to this setup? Because you are right. You know, these players have the ability to win the World Cup, but it's for them to deliver on the days when it matters. That is for Darren Sammy to decide whether he wants to be friends with everyone and if that brings out the best in them, fine. But if he has to be harsh, for want of a better term, or read the riot act if necessary, then that has to be done as well. Because remember, at the end of the day, and we've had this discussion before, it's all well and good to be, a, to be a, to everyone playing for each other, fantastic team spirit, everyone laughing and joking and a training. You can see the vibe being positive. And then when it comes to the big occasion on the field, it just doesn't click. So at the end of the day, it's up to Sammy to know his players. He clearly will know the players better than any of us would, being in, the, in that proximity and also having been involved with two championship winning teams in World T20s. He is the one to know if, yes, it's all good to be smiley and happy to the cameras and the microphones, but in the dressing room and talking to the players, what is required to get the best out of them. And if it is, at times, you need to be harsh. You need to be harsh because at the end of the day, this is not a friendship society. This is elite-level sporting competition. Yeah. Faz, you know, I've always wished I could be a fly on the wall when selectors sit down to meet because, you know, I would like to hear the, 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 the variations of thoughts between the men selecting the team and who is pushing for who and who is pushing for who. Uh, I want to ask you this question because when... Shamar Joseph, Sean, in Australia, as you referenced earlier on, Darren Sammy said he can't wait to get his hands on this man because he felt that this is a bowler that can help for our World Cup bid. But then some weeks after that, he had said he wouldn't be picking um, Shamar Joseph on hype. And it almost sounded as if he was going a little bit back on what he had said some weeks earlier on. Um, can you juxtapose those two comments for me and how you read them? And uh, if you think, because this is only a thought now, we weren't in the selection meeting, uh, do you think Haynes was the one pushing for Shamar and not so much Darren Sammy? Well, you'll be the fly, I'll be the mosquito on the wall. And uh, I, I think the, that initial reaction from Darren Sammy, yes. I think... That is the true opinion of Darren Sam. Yes. I think he pulled back on it, trying to, because he recognized what he said. Yes. But it was too late. So, so quite obviously, he's a big fan based on that test match performance. But having said that, you've got to be able now to say, can you expect a Shamar Joseph to reproduce in the concentrated environment? of T20s where you may be called upon to bowl two overs at the, at the top, two at the death, or any combination thereof. So I think, I, I take your point that it could very well be Desmond Haynes, but I suspect that it was Darren Sami waving the flag for Shamar Joseph, notwithstanding his best efforts 
to pull back from what he had said initially. Yeah, I, I, I think you might be right there. And I'm a Shamar Joseph fan as well. I had Shamar Joseph in my World Cup team because of his, his bowling skill. I accept that he hasn't played white ball cricket internationally, but I agree with Desmond Haynes. He is a bowler with tools. He's steady. He is an accurate kind of bowler, and he tends to put the ball where he wants to put the ball, which is important in, in T20 cricket. Now, having said that, Faz, are you disappointed that Shamar isn't playing many games in the IPL? Very much so, because th that really is the only way he's going to fine-tune those skills. It's all well and good to talk about what he did in the test fight, and it was fabulous. We, 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 that, there's no debate about that. It's going to live in our memories as, as long as we're around. But as you know very well, and, and indeed most of our viewers uh, will be aware, the length and lengths and lines that you bowl in test match cricket may not be as effective. In fact, could be detrimental in T20 cricket. And, and yes, I, I was listening to a discussion involving the great Sir Kirtley Ambrose and Sir Vivian Richards talking about quickly bowling those Yorkers. Yes, it could be absolutely deadly in, in, in one context, but if you've got a cricketer, uh, a Glenn Maxwell, or someone who's prepared for that, who is practicing smashing Yorkers for six or smashing them off the inside edge, which could be even well thought of or well calculated, you could go for a lot of runs. And therefore, you need to be playing the game to be tested. Look what is happening to Mitchell Stark for the Kolkata Knight Riders in the Indian Premier League. One format success, quite obviously, doesn't guarantee success in the other. So yes, you would want to see Shamar Joseph playing a lot more T20 cricket leading up to the World Cup itself. Yeah, I want to ask you quickly too, when you referenced it just now, because you thought two left-arm spinners with Hossein and Aguda Kishimoto in there, uh, maybe they could have opted for another, another bowler or a different bowler. Um, I know you had expressed some sympathy with Hayden Walsh Jr. some time ago. You felt he was hard done by. He has done okay in, in Nepal. Um, can you just expand on the point you were making that you could question having two left-arm spinners in this 15-man squad? And I know it can be a legitimate argument. You know, people will say, well, what's wrong with two left-arm spinners if they're up to the standard? I agree with that totally. Yes. But, but again, you want to give yourself options. That's why I mentioned Kyle Mayers. I had Hayden Walsh in mind. But again, I think that Hayden Walsh, over the last couple of years, has really not been given the sort of opportunity that will allow him to, one, really fine-tune his skills to talk about a World T20 squad and also to feel comfortable in that environment once again. That's why I felt Kyle Mayers, uh, and, and you, you all would have gone through that already, uh, yourself and Nikhil, in talking about Kyle Mayers, so there's no need to go over beaten ground in that regard. But it's not so much saying that Gunagesh Moti doesn't merit a place in the team, but having two similar type bowlers uh, again, it could work fantastically in, in a match where, where the, 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 the surface is taking that type of spin. But I just think you'd want to give yourself an additional option by having someone like a Kyle Bayers instead of Moti. Yeah, well, Faz, as you know, this discussion will continue as we continue to build up towards the T20 World Cup. We want to thank you so much for chatting with us on this Friday and we'll talk again soon. Looking forward to it. Take care. All right, Fazir Mohammed there, our cricket analyst. We're taking a quick break and we are coming right back.